Hello and welcome to the Google Cloud Data Engineer Beta Certification Review. I'm Joe Holbrook. I'm the owner of Cloud Bursting Corp. I'm a consulting engineer and a technical trainer based out of Jacksonville, Florida. Our goal today is to uh, help uh, enable you to take the Google Cloud Data Engineer exam and uh, be successful the first time to take the exam. Now, one of the uh, areas of focus around um, taking a Google exam is to, of course, uh, understand uh, where, um, where to study and, and how to study. Now, as with any other vendor, um, you know, Google, I think, does, does a fairly um, decent job at trying to define what you have to study. It, it just sometimes isn't as clear as it could be, I think. Now, I'm going to point out one area when we get to it uh, that you definitely want to study for the test, um, a little bit more than what it would appear you would be tested on uh, based on the JTA and um, uh, the demonstration areas that they go through. So what is, what is a data engineer? So the data engineer uh, is going to enable a data-driven decision-making uh, uh, approach, and the goal is to collect, transform, and visualize data. So you're going to go ahead and build, uh, design, maintain, and troubleshoot uh, data processing uh, scenarios, etc. I'm not going to read it all, of course, but uh, just wanted to, um, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, we had we had a uh, a baseline to go through. Now, the the Google Cloud Platform Data Engineer uh, Beta Exam. Uh, is 100 questions. Uh, the cost was $120. Uh, the link to go to is here uh, to find out more about the exam. The exam time was four hours for the beta. Now, when this goes into production, it'll likely be 50 questions, and you'll get about 90 minutes or two hours. I forgot exactly what the um, uh, architect one is now, but uh, I assume it'll follow the same path. Now, the main challenge with the test is being able to sign up and take it. Um, and what I mean by that is they use a, a company called Criterion as their uh, test proctor. Now, um, if you're in a small city like uh, Jacksonville, uh, Des Moines, uh, Savannah, you may be challenged to, uh, to be able to take uh, uh, this exam. And the reason is, is because it's... Criterion has a limited number of uh, proctoring centers um, from what I have found. So um, if you're in a bigger city, it probably wouldn't be a problem. I actually had to take this one um, on a business trip in D.C. because I just wasn't able to take it at home. And this is weeks and weeks and weeks. So if you're working during the week, um, the test location, there's only one in Jacksonville I could take this exam at. So uh, that really put me in a challenge uh, to, to be able to take it. So again, I think Criterion was not really a good choice for a global company like uh, Google. That's just my thought. Now, uh, for those folks that do know me, have worked with me, I've had the opportunity to develop a lot of exams. Uh, for uh, different organizations. So I've worked uh, with CompTIA. Uh, I was the cloud uh, subject matter expert uh, on the cloud essentials, as well as the first version of the CompTIA Cloud Plus exams. I've also had the, uh, the privilege of working with Brocade on several of Brocade certifications as well. So with that said, I, I have a fair, fairly good knowledge of how test development should occur. And I don't feel Google really spent or invested a lot of time in this area. So when you take the test, you're going to likely find grammar errors. Now, I probably spent about 15 minutes making comments to, to at least 16 or 17 questions uh, around grammar or pronunciation, or not pronunciation, but the, the way you read a question, uh, it was obvious that probably someone that didn't speak English as a primary language probably wrote it. Um, and, and again, nothing wrong with that per se, but these are mistakes that clearly, um, if you used a Bloom system or some kind of other best practice 
with JTAs and test development, etc., you probably wouldn't have made. So the test, uh, again, um, probably uh, needed a little bit more reviewing, in my opinion. Uh, as far as the case studies, what I did like was Google actually listed the case studies um, and gave you the case studies that you're going to see on the exam. So you had time to review the case studies before you took the exam. Now that's a beautiful thing, especially like uh, if you're a little tight on time. So you didn't have to like read into the exam three or four times to make sure you understood um, the case study and the scenarios that they give you for the case study. So at least that way you had a heads up by reviewing the case study. So I thought that was really a nice thing to do. Cloud data proc. So here's the, the technical areas you're going to see on the test. Data proc. Know what it is. Know how to migrate it. Uh, migrate with it, for example. Cloud data flow. Numerous questions around uh, data flow and know, um, know the difference between streaming and batching. That was a, you know, a couple uh, references to that. Know that it's a managed service. Uh, also know that you could use it for ETL. Uh, also lastly, know that cloud data flow. You could also integrate and manage services um, with cloud storage as well as compute engine. So do uh, do understand how this all could work together. Pipelines. This is another area that you might want to know. Uh, also, too, it, a question was asking about JSON or Java. How would you use it, and how could you, uh, you know, uh, uh, choose one over another? I, I think was more the focus uh, for a pipeline. So, do have a good idea around what JSON is and Java as well, of course. Storage. Now, this is fairly heavily tested uh, overall, I thought. Uh, they definitely talked about cloud storage quite a bit. Uh, also know why you may want to use uh, big data storage or cold line storage versus cloud storage, for example. Hadoop. Get warm and fuzzy with the deep before you take the test, and here's why. You're not only going to get Hadoop, but you're going to get tested on other um, uh, other uh, solutions like Hive, Scoop, Uzi, as well as uh, Pig and Mapper, some of those I didn't let uh, leave there. And the reason is, is you're going to get uh, numerous questions on why you would want to use Hive, or would you use Scoop, or would you use Mapper, or would you use um, uh, Pig, for example. So, for example, if we're talking about ETL, know what you're going to use. Uh, if you're talking about uh, um, processing data, know what you're going to, going to use, for example. Uh, reducing data, uh, consolidating, etc. Just know what these services are. Also, too, there is a question on HCFS. Do you know what that is? Okay, now stack driver. Now, Stackdriver, for those that don't know what it is, Stackdriver is Google's uh, essentially monitoring service. It's, it's considered a hybrid monitoring service. And so uh, even though I consider that more around uh, operations than anything else, uh, they wanted not so much that you knew what Stack, Stackdriver was, but how you could use Stackdriver to be able to debug source code, for example, or how to monitor um, uh, applications, for example, and, and how to solve problems around um, troubleshooting with Stackdriver. Okay, this slide here, uh, it, this is, you know, about probably 18, 20 percent of the test right here. Big table, big query, Cloud SQL. Know what these are. You will get tested heavily on these. Now, understand what big table is. Why would you use big table over big query? Know what is a, which one's a data warehouse, which one is a new SQL database. Uh, know those things. But also, too, how you could tie them into uh, cloud storage uh, or um, how you could uh, migrate data uh, as well from a uh, customer site as well. Cloud SQL, they definitely want you to know um, about Cloud SQL. Um, it seemed like they tested more heavily on Bigtable and BigQuery than Cloud SQL. 
but if you if you're good at SQL, you're going to know Claude SQL uh, fairly straightforward. Now, okay, here is where I crashed the car. <laughs> Basically, um, I did not really prepare uh, enough uh, around uh, uh, machine language and, and machine learning uh, and uh, automated intelligence. Now, again, I know what those are, but for me, I'm just not focused on those areas, so I don't have that super heavy experience around it. Now, for the test, they're going to ask you about TensorFlow, and, and yes, they're going to ask you about Mandelbrot and CloudML. Those are things I don't play with or use. Um, I'm, you know, again, just not a focus area for me. But when you take the test, uh, you're going to find that there, there's going to be, uh, you know, somewhere probably around 10% of the test just on this area. Again, you know, you probably won't fail the test if you don't know it, if you know everything else. But uh, again, this is tested heavily, and there are some new terms in there that I really didn't know um, uh, what, what they were really talking about. So this is an area I had to pass over pretty much. Now, Cloud Lab, Cloud Data Lab. Now, again, you need to, to know what this is. It seemed like they really wanted to know uh, this falls into the big data realm where they wanted to to make sure you knew how to to analyze transform and it seemed most importantly visualize the data so they asked you about different solutions out there for visualizing data what you could use also they wanted to to make sure you knew about the different models around um, uh, data analysis as well so get to know that as well now i put a link here um, so one of the things I did after I took the test is I had to do some research on TensorFlow and what Mandelbrot was and, and what a set was and, and, and uh, dive into machine learning a little bit more than what I had experience with. And I found this page here is a really good start to, to get to know what you need to know for the test because I don't feel Google um, really has that documentation on, on the Google Cloud page. So again, you're going to need to know a little bit outside of what is a document on Google uh, GCP, that is. So um, so read into this. You're going to do OK if, if you can understand uh, a lot of terminology. Also, too, uh, neural networks. You really need to know what those are. I, I saw that term at least three times on the test. So again, I was a little bit caught uh, off guard with that. Lastly. Uh, the last area I'm going to cover is around PubSub now. Now, PubSub is uh, Google's um, messaging service uh, that you could tie in, uh, integrate with other uh, services. And here's a uh, chart that I thought was pretty useful that you could use to, to understand what PubSub goes in, but how you could use PubSub not only to, you know, diagnose issues, but also publish uh, you know, become a publisher of apps as well. So you can see that PubSub ties into numerous other services like cloud monitoring, data flow, uh, the API, uh, logs as well, and Compute Engine. This, you'll get a couple questions on PubSub. I do understand how that works. So with that said, I want to personally thank everyone for listening uh, for the short amount of time here. If you do take the test, let me know how you do. Link, get linked up on LinkedIn. Uh, just search for Joe Holbrook out of Jacksonville, Florida, Cloud Burst and Corp. Uh, if you need any help or have any questions, let me know what you think of the, the video. Please go ahead and post it on uh, YouTube as well. Thank you so much for joining. Good luck on your test. Over and out. Uh